All right, so this is going to be a fairly quick video on how to do a raster image to a vector file for engraving in the EasyCAD 2 software that came with the Chinese fiber laser that I use. I'll do videos later on on setup and uh, on the machine, but this is just going to be a bit simple workflow. So I have a customer that wanted to do an engraving on a gun barrel on the top of a pistol barrel. And it's an H and K 45 and they want to put H K 45 on the top, even though it says 45 auto on the side, but people do weird stuff with their guns. And yeah, so here we go. So how am I going to get the H and K logo for the artwork? Oh, well, we're going to Google it. So we're going to Google heckler and Koch, but we want the logo and we're going to go to images, Heckler and Cock. And this is a really good example because this already has a transparent background. It's nice and clean. So it's going to vector real quick. Um, if you have artwork that's got shading and stuff, the vector lines are not going to, it's going to be harder to get sh clean lines and I'll do an example of that later on. So we're going to right click, save image as I've already saved this. So it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it. So save as save. Yes. We're going to overwrite it. We can get rid of this. We're going to open the file browser. We're going to find in pictures, the logo, and we're going to drag it into Adobe illustrator. Now use Adobe Illustrator because it's probably got the best uh, raster to vector image trace tool that I've found. Um, I've tried Corel Draw and a couple others, but Illustrator's really got the best one. Uh, navigator, I really don't like this Navigator. I, I like to use the scroll wheel to zoom without having to push buttons for side to side. Most CAD programs, 3D programs, your scroll wheel is your zoom and it usually zooms into wherever the mouse is. But here I got to hit the alt key and I'm pretty sure that there's a workaround for that. Uh, I just haven't taken the time to find it. So this is huge. So we're going to resize it. So if you grabbed a corner and you're with the, in the uh, selection tool, upper right hand corner, any of the corners, hold the shift button and you'll get a proportional scale. So there we go. So let's zoom in. So this is a raster image, JPEG, bitmap, TIFF image. Anything that's not vector is pretty much a raster. So in the top toolbar here, you have image trace, and this is the trace tool. So you click that and it's going to trace it, but it's really not showing you anything. So there's a tool fly out over here and you click that and you get this image trace properties window open up the advanced section and normally what i'm going to do is in views i want to see the image but i also want to see the trace outlines and these aqua teal lines are where the vectors are actually going to be drawn the other thing that i do is i tick ignore whites okay if you don't tick that you're going to get a vector outline for the white and you're going to get one for the black and that's going to give you double vectors overlapping each other and you don't want that because that's going to cause problems in the EasyCAD 2 software and it's not going to give you a fill pattern because the vectors are going to be all screwed up and uh, I'll show that in another video when I get a little more in depth on how I actually use this tool this is a, a quick down and dirty so when you click expand, it's going to take your raster image and now you have vectors. So this is vector art where you can manipulate the, the vectors. And if you're not familiar with working with vectors, there's a lot of YouTube videos on that. That's not what this is. Okay. So what I do is I get rid of the fill. So if we go over here in a fill color, hold the shift, click on that. You'll get these properties. We're going to get rid of the the fill and the stroke is already blank. So we have nothing, but it's actually still there. We just got to 
find it. There we go. All right. So I want to I want to give the stroke a color, make it black. Uh, I'm going to change the size. I like to work with the thinnest vector. You can type in something smaller than that, but for this example, it's fine. And like that, we have a logo that is vectored. So EasyCAD 2 needs to have vector artwork in order to fill this area with a hatch pattern to do a deep engrave. These, this vector, anything you want to fill with a hatch pattern, it's got to be a closed vector. If there's vectors overlapping, crisscrossed, or open, it will give you all kinds of skewed results. So EasyCAD 2 will take in Adobe AI file as a vector input, but through trial and error, I found out that you have to save it as a prior version. So HK logo, we're going to save it to our pictures folder, save. Yeah, I know I already have it. So yes. So what I'm talking about is over here, when you go to save it, your illustrator options, open this up and you're going to back this down to illustrator three and you ignore these warnings because that's, we're not worried about that. Okay. You get this other warning, you can click okay and we're done there so now we can reduce illustrator and now into the meat and potatoes easy cad 2 there's not a lot of information on youtube on this and when you google it or you youtube search it you get a couple of uh videos from the chinese manufacturers in china and they just point and click there's no audio there's no explanation uh, and you kind of got to figure it out on your own and through a lot of trial and error, I figured there's quite a few people out there that don't know how to use this or I've had a lot of people ask me. So here we go. So this software is supposed to work with a dongle and the board is a JZ, JZB board. My laser control board, the dongle is built in and it will only work with the version of software that they sent me. So it's probably a bootleg or not an official JZB licensed control card. So we launched this, the cannot find dog, which is basically the dongle, but they call it dog. Uh, soft will work in demo state. Love the Chinese to English uh, conversion. Demo state is fine. We don't care. All right. So this is the basic window, here's all your vector tools. You can draw shapes, write text, bring in images. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to file, import vector file. So we're going to pull in the Adobe Illustrator file that we did there. there there's our logo. Open. Where is it? Oh, yeah, it's huge. All right, so let's uh, over here. We got a center tool. We're going to bring it to the center. Uh, this works the same as Illustrator. Grab a corner, hold shift, and you will get a proportional scale. Right now, we're not worried about how big this is or exact because we're going to rescale it when we go outside to actually engrave it. So we just want to show the fill and some of the fill tools. So to do a deep engrave, you got to go over the same area multiple times and you don't want to have funky patterns in this, in the bottom of this engrave where it's going to be flat. So this hatch tool here is going to let you define three different tools and you can apply three different patterns and properties to each hatch pattern. So hatch pattern one is going to be a zigzag. It's going to cut horizontal, vertical and horizontal, and it's going to make a zigzag and that's fine. So we're going to use pen zero for this. So this, we can select which tool we're going to use on this hatch pattern. Line distance is the spacing between the horizontal lines or whatever angle you set here is the spacing between the passes. Uh, there are some instructions, like if you got the help file, which by the way, the help file, you just have about, there's no help file. You have to find it and download a PDF. And again, it's the Chinese to English typical conversion. And it's like reading stereo instructions. So hatch pattern. So hatch one, we're going to do at zero degrees. Hatch two, we're going to do at 90 degrees, which is going to be up and down. We're going to use a different tool. We could use the same one because they don't have the same settings, but I usually use zero one 
and two. So tool three is going to be our cleanup pass. So we're going to do this one at 315 degrees and it's going to only cut in one direction. It's not going to make the zigzag. It's only going to cut lines and we're going to use this to clean up the bottom of the engraving. So we'll click OK. And there's your fill pattern. So what is this? What this is, is basically the actual path that the laser is going to follow when it fires. So your tool zero at zero degrees are all the horizontal lines. Tool one are the vertical lines and tool three is the cleanup pass at 315 degrees. So you'll see where we've said we wanted it to zigzag. And this is another software that sucks for scrolling. So here, this pattern is going to come across, up, and over while it still burns. The other tool is going to go up and down and over, and here you see the edges. Now on tool one, let's say we want to say follow the edge once. It will draw an outline around your 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 uh, graphic. It's going to outline it. Problem is, is what it's going to do is every other pass where the blue line is also doing that, you're going to get double burns. So sometimes it makes the outline too pronounced or it burns the edges. So I usually leave that off and it comes out a lot cleaner. Depends on what you're doing. Um, this line spacing 03 millimeters I found works pretty good for steel and aluminum. Um, there's other condition, you know, there's other circumstances where you'd want to change this line spacing. You really got to do is spend a lot of time experimenting with different power settings and hatch patterns to get the effect that you're looking for. So what are the pen tools? So the pen tools zero, one, two, and three, we have to define the laser, what the, what the, the parameters are going to be for that tool. So we're going to untick use default. And the mark loops is how many times it's going to do that pattern. So for a deep engrave, I usually do each tool 10 times. I'm going to do a speed of 1500 millimeters per second power. We'll go 60%. I have a 50 watt laser frequency on, on metals for coarse burning the lower frequency the more power you're going to put into the into the material so 35 hertz the laser on and laser off time when the laser is traveling across the part that's the time it's going to start and the time it's going to stop and you have to play with this setting so if you drew a square and the laser was going across the square, what happened is, is you have to tell it how many microseconds before it hits this border to turn off when it's going out and turn on when it's coming back in. And that's going to change every time you change this speed setting because the mirrors that move the laser beam are going to be traveling faster. So your on and off times are going to have to be higher. Now you can save, when you set this up and you get it all dialed in, you can save this as a default and every time, you, once you adjust this, it'll come back up. So that's tool one. Tool two, we're gonna use the same settings. We're gonna use 10. We're gonna go at 1500, power at 60, and the frequency at 35. Now there's no accept button over here, okay? So once you type something in here, even if you don't tab out of this, when you go to burn it, it's going to already apply these settings. So don't look for an OK or a check button because it doesn't exist. I normally just tab out of it or I click into a different field just to make sure, but I've never seen it not make this change. So if I change this to 135 or 175 and I don't click out of that box and I run it, it will run with what I just typed in there. So just FYI. All right, so let's take that back down to 35. Tool two is our cleanup pass. We're only going to do this one time. We're going to maintain the same speed. We're going to keep the same power. 
Oops. 60. But we're going to change the frequency to 75. And I found that for aluminum and steel, 75 and 65, depending on the metal and the uh, tight grade of aluminum, that usually gives the a nice clean finish pass. And that's uh, that's basically the setup for this. Um, so for part one, that's wrap about wraps up. We do have to do the point 45, so we want to do some text in here. So we got to go over here to this little edit window. Dot four four five for 45 caliber and you have to click apply if you don't click apply it's not going to apply so that looks like an okay size you can drag rulers in here for alignment most vector programs will let you do this and then snap to them i can select both of these and then i can go to modify align bottom and we can do is select this arrow over it's a little small so we can either change the font size here or we could just drag it and we do that line again now it looks a little close that looks pretty good now if we go to do this fill pattern this hatch pattern again it will come up with whatever we set the last time so we don't have to go through and change all the settings again. I do notice a difference though. Tool two has got a different spacing. So let's change that to three and click this to three. So when this window pops up, you can make changes between the two and only accept it once. Okay. If you go over and you have this window, which for some reason it'll pop up either this window or it'll just pop up the side window so the side window here every time you make a change on one of these hatch patterns you gotta click apply okay if i change this this pattern here and i go to two and i go back to one it didn't change apply so let's change it Let's just go to two and go back to one. Oh, call me a liar. Okay, no, it didn't. I clicked out of it. All right, so if I want to change this, I have to change it and then click apply. Otherwise, you got to change it and make sure you don't forget to hit apply. And it just keeps toggling through apply. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So in part two, we're going to do is the setup check the focal length and we're going to burn this on a H and K 45 barrel. All right. Any questions, uh, comments in the comments below and I'll try to make a point of reading them and see if there's something specific you want to see. I'll be getting into some additional artwork and some other stuff in illustrator. Uh, I don't know, you know, illustrators, people that are very talented out there and on illustrator, I basically just use this to convert, uh, rasters to vectors and then i can play around with the vectors and do some custom stuff all right that's it for now catch us later